And I will stop. Please, the floor is, is, is yours. And okay, thank you very much, Hanna, to invite me here and to be like and beautiful Italy with nice Italian students. I'm happy to see a lot of Italian students here. And uh, today I will talk about time delays as you can understood. And I will start with video for people who are far away from control, just to give you idea what is time delay and if it is harmful or useful. By the way, I think we have to share the, um, the screen on the Zoom as well. So, mm -hmm. with my mistake, I did, I forgot before. So, share screen. Okay, so now everyone should be able to see the screen, right? Okay, sorry. Okay, so, so please. What's your connotation when you hear the word delay, positive or negative? Sometimes delays are annoying, like when they spoil our plans, delaying our flight. But in some cases, delay can be a wonderfully useful phenomena, helping us solve important challenges. These are the kinds of delays I research within the engineering field of control theory. Delays are unavoidable in control. For example, while driving a car, we try to avoid delays in our reaction, if we need to slam on our brakes. In the shower, we try to control water temperature, but there is a delay between turning the faucet and what we feel. Even epidemics like COVID-19 can be studied like control mechanisms. Lockdowns are based on the latest data, but the data includes delays in both diagnosis and reporting. One of our challenges in managing systems that include inherent delays is the gap between the continuous flow of information or communication versus discrete time signals or pulses of information, where we lose the information in between each path. Why is this an important challenge to overcome in modern life? Because in the case of modern control systems, we use network-based control, where signals are transmitted through a communication network to manage long-distance control of, say, drones or robots. Take the example of drone flying in Haifa, and we want to control it from Tel Aviv. We send to the drone control signals via a communication network, but from signal to signal there are delays. On the drone side, our control signal is received and is on hold till the next update, so pulse 1 continues until pulse 2 arrives. The classical approach to such control loses information about the drone between the sampling instance. This may be dangerous. That's precisely why we developed a new and efficient time delay approach to network-based control, where we treat the control signals as continuous ones with delays that do not leave out significant information. In contrast to the classical approach, our method allows to stay in real time and prevents losing data about the drone between the sampling instance. This leads us to reliable and efficient control methods. Our methods can be used in a diverse range of modern-day settings that employ network-based control, from power systems to medical operations by remote to advanced defense systems. It's a great feeling to know I'm contributing 
to these life-changing and life-saving systems reliability. Okay, I will start with the effects of the limit on stability and performance, and then we will talk about using delays for control, which means that it is something useful, not just something which solves everything. Okay, now it does not go because I would like to. Okay. Now I hope everything was a delay, everything starts working. And uh, so about this uh, very bad effect of delay you have heard, but uh, uh, particularly this case was, the delay was not so large. It was on my way to the main control conference in Las Vegas, which is called CDC. And it was about half hour delay, so I was in time and welcome and everything was fine. So what does it mean that usually if the delay is not large, it's small enough, then we can um, preserve the performance that we want. But in this case, we would like to have an analytical upper bound on the way which preserves everything. And I will talk a, a bit about these tools, how to have criteria which says that till this value of delay, you are on the safe part. But in some cases, delay, even arbitrary small delay, can be uh, destabilizing, can explode the system. And this is uh, the case of usually this uh, uh, or partial differential equations or some special types of time delay systems. So here I'm giving the way of the wave equation, classical wave equation in one disk space, psi is special variable, and this means second time derivative equals second. Uh, derivative in the special variable. And this special variable from zero to one, from one uh, side we have the very clear boundary condition, and from the other it is uh, a kind of Neumann boundary condition with this damping term. And H is delay. So when h equals zero, we have no delay here. What happens with this wave equation? It appears that no matter what is initial condition, you will, in two seconds, you will have zero solution. This is a very nice property. Uh, now in control, it is very popular to have prescribed type convergence in a given time exactly zero and no matter what was your initial condition. So this is fantastic. But if you have arbitrary small delay here, uh, the system explodes. And this is very dangerous because if this damping fields comes from the feedback, how can you avoid arbitrary small delay in the feedback? No way. In the feedback or in the measurements, you have all this very small delay. And, and this explodes everything. So when you are analyzing your system or designing control observer, you have to guarantee that there are some robustness properties, otherwise it, uh, it is not useful. But now I will talk about 
good properties of duopolis. And in some cases, we can introduce delays to, to the feedback in order to achieve our control purposes. Because without delay, we cannot do it. So this is very attractive feature of delay systems, right? So why this happens? This is the simplest example of double integrator. We measure just the partition and not measure the loss. And uh, the open OOP system is not stable, does not converge to zero, but uh, we want to have a static, a simple static output feedback like this. And if you use K not Y, K not X here, you can check that it does not stabilize the system in the way that uh, state converts to zero. So what can be done? Of course, if you could use also Y dot, which you do not measure, then this system is stabilizable. So the idea is to approximate Y dot by finite distance. For small enough age, this approximation is uh, very good. And if we substitute here, instead of Y dot, this final difference, we finish up with static output feedback, but with delay. So uh, this is good, theoretically fantastic, but practically not very much because engineers say that delay actually produces some dynamics as well, it is not a solution. So how, for instance, to implement such controller? In order to implement it, you need to save in buffer all the values of y t minus h from t minus h to t, right? And this, uh, this are infinite values of measurements, which is not practical. So what can be done instead? Instead, we can use sample data implementation of this. What does it mean? For instance, we have sampling intervals, zero, t0, zero, t, uh, t1, t2, t3, discrete type uh, sampling instance, which goes to infinity. And we can use just uh, this sample data static output feedback, where from TK to TK plus one, we use just this value. So Y in the current sampling time and one more in the previous sampling time. And this can be easily implemented because we have just to uh, preserve in the buffer just one more value of Y, which is doing. So also in this case, what is very important to have some reliable conditions and simply verifiable ones, how to find the upper bound on the sampling interval or upper bound on the day, which, pre which guarantees everything. Doesn't work again. Just with your Okay. Can I put it closer to me? Oh, okay. So and now one more. I want to present one more property 
which is called positivity of the system, which is also important thing in control system analysis and in design. What does it mean positivity? If you start with positive initial condition, you will stay positive. Your solution is positive, uh, does not change the side. And so, for instance, in uh, this color case, what happens? X is colored when H equals zero. Of course, this is positive system. You have solution exponent minus T multiplied by initial condition. If it is possible, positive the initial condition, then the solution is positive. What happens when you have H, which is small. So till uh, delay H less than one over E, we preserve the positivity. This is still, just a moment, no, this is still positive. Here, a delay is one over two E. Okay, and then from one over e till pi over two, uh, solution starts to oscillate in what sense? It changes the sign, zero is here. But it is still stable. So first system uh, loses positivity when you enlarge delay and only further, it, it loses stability. Stability starts from pi over two. This is unstable system. And uh, all the way effects uh, usually are illustrated by dancers because dancing is my hobby, but probably we have no much time here. I will, I will say that uh, stabilizing delay is in tango, and uh, why I will explain later on, and uh, I will talk about time delay approach to sample that it is in slow folks, and I will explain why. Okay, so let's continue with um. Now, so the objective of my talk is using delay for control. And by using delay, I mean um, uh, using time delay model for your problem and use some analysis tools from time delay to, to which guarantee the performance, the stability, the exponential stability for those who are familiar, input to state stability, and so on. Okay, so the first method, it is actually the old one, which started uh, just after my PhD in Russian period. And uh, uh, so this is a time to approach to sample data control. So what does it mean? We have, for, uh, for instance, this linear system, and we want to, uh, to use sample data control. For simplicity, consider the state feedback. And to be, this is implemented by a zero or the whole device. What does it mean? It means that we have piecewise, piecewise constant control feedback, yes? And sample data control is very important because modern control systems employ digital control. And the question is how to analyze such a closed loop system. So if we substitute these back to the system, we finish up with such a system. And here we have both continuous time and discrete time. So how to start the stability of such systems? So there, there are three main approaches to sample data control, and the oldest one 
it was uh, from before 60s, and it uses discrete time approach. What does that mean? We can integrate this system from TK to TK plus one, finish up with discrete time system and easily verify its stability, and uh, it guarantees the stability of the original linear system, which is fine. But what does it lose? For instance, uh, it loses intersampling behavior of the system. We just know what happens in discrete time. And uh, this problem appeared very hot in the in the beginning of 90s, who is the beginning of aging field control? Because you have additional disturbance and you want to guarantee that the induced uh, performance L2 gain will be preserved to your sample data systems. And then this simple, simple integration doesn't work. You need some additional tools. Another thing, if you have here uncertainties, how you will integrate it, it's also not uh, reliable. And for non-linear case, so uh, to preserve this intersampling behavior, two approaches were suggested. And one of these approaches was at the time delay approach, and another one impulsive or hybrid system approach. So these approaches preserve all intersampling behavior. What, what does this approach mean? So we present TK as T minus tau T. What is tau T is T minus TK. So if you substitute this back, it is the same TK. Nothing happened, but in such a form, you have this presentation for all t, you don't need this, and tau t is delay. This is a very special kind of delay. By the way, you may have variable sampling intervals, and then you will have the, this kind of delays, the so-called sort of delays. So the time delay approach to sample data consists of the first step where we have model with time delay. And now we need some tools, usually uh, efficient tools are Laponov analysis. And we need Laponov analysis to guarantee that uh, Till what upper bound of delay we have, we preserve the stability provided that without delay we have stability. This is the first question that we will answer. So, and this is illustration by slow fox for those who know slow fox and slow fox, of course, as in all steps, you have discrete time steps. But what is special for this dance is that you have to preserve as, as, as continuous as possible performance, but how, not like in Tandem where you have staccato, something aggressive. Here it is very continuous. And this is the idea of Tandem approach that you preserve continuous Tandem. It's nothing, is discrete. And now, how to use Laponov analysis to guarantee that the system is stable and to find up about H to which it preserves the stability. So I don't know if uh, you have heard about Laponov method. No. So the idea of Laponov method that you have some Laponov function B, scalar function of the state of your system, which is physically means the energy of your system. And uh, when will you converge to zero if V dot is negative, your energy decreases. This is the idea of Laponov method. And so, 
Uh, this method is well known for linear time invariant systems. For instance, if you have no delay here, tau, tau is equal, equal zero, you have this nominal system. And we assume that A plus A1 is stable for continuous time systems. It means it is hooded. All its eigenvalues in the left half plane have negative real facts. So for such a system, uh, the it is necessary and sufficient condition for stability, the existence of Lapinov function in such quadratic form where P is a uh, positive definite. So if we use the system like this without additional part is asymptotically stable, converged to zero, if and only if there exists V of such form such that V dot is negative. V dot, we differentiate this and we have two x transpose P multiplied by X dot and this is X. So, okay, so this, this is negative and this is well known fact. Now, what happens with delay when delay is small? The idea is that if without delay everything is fine, we present this term as the non delayed one, the nominal part for which everything looks fine, and additional disturbance. See, if we integrate this, we will have xt minus xt minus tau, right? And it is exactly what we have here. So we have this equality, and a blue part is something which disturbs our moment of system. So we substitute this into our system. We finish up with this system, and now we uh, use Lapunov function, which works for the nominal part. And, and we finish up with this additional term. And now the problem is reduced to the following one. We need to guarantee that this is negative. We know that this part is negative for all non-zero x, but we have some additional term. In order to have some uh, feasible conditions, we need to create minus quadratic terms like this. And this solves our problem. So how to create it? This was done in our paper with Uri Shaket, and uh, this term looks like this. And this is already not function, which depends on T, on the current value of T, but this is functional of X, which depends on X dot, by the way, from T minus H to T. This is called function. And if we add this term to the nominal one and integrate it, we will finish up with this good negative term, which after um, which after some the so-called Jensen inequality or Schwarz inequality uh, creates minus quadratic terms, and then it solves the problem. But of course, for good term, you have always some punishment, the positive one, and you have to, to be able to take it into account. But it is of the order of H. So for small H, it disappears, which is good. And this was analysis for any fast, fast variant delay. What do I mean by fast variant delay? There is no any bound on the delay derivative. And now, uh, what happens if we have 
a special sort of delay, how to take into account a special sort of delay, then something um, specific was done, this was modified and it appeared very efficient. And now I just want to show how it works on the same scalar example that we have seen. So this is scalar example, sample data case. We pre, by using time delay approach, we can present our system like this. And what happens when we consider just tau as time varying delays? This is the only example where I know for time varying delay the upper bound, this is exact upper bound 1.5 which preserves the stability for any time varying delay. Less than this, we are on the safe side, the system is stable. But if we consider this simple data system, the upper bound is much larger, it is two. So how to, so if we use Lapunov method for fast variant delay we will be in the best case close to this and smaller than this, but there is a gap. And uh, the last function, so this is the result uh, which was rather efficient by treating delay as fast variant delay, but this was resolved by uh, my uh, modification in the last line in Automatica 2010, and it was uh, analytical upper bound. And I was sure that there was some mistake in the program. Uh, I didn't believe this jump, but uh, fortunately there were other examples where it didn't give the exact upper bound, but it was essentially still essentially better than fast variety. And, and this time delay approach appeared to be very useful for networked control systems. What do I understand by network control systems? As you have seen in this video, we are controlling the drone, which, which is, let us say, in Roma from uh, uh, Tirba, and we want to, to take care of it. So what can be done? We can use um, network communication, and so we have plant, and we are here, and uh, our drone is far away from us. And uh, it sends us in the discrete time some measurements. We construct controller, and we send it back to activator of this drone by using communication network. And of course, network uh, induces its own uh, imperfections. And uh, for instance, what should be uh, taken into account? Of course, variable sampling intervals. So this we have already studied uh, how to treat it, yes, in the previous part. But we can also have some additional communication delays. And we have the information is sent in packets and we may have uh, lots of the packets, and we may, we may have, well, all the signals are quantized signals, so there is error due to quantization. And what is uh, what was very interesting in this framework, uh, communication constraints. What does it mean? You may have, for instance, you have several measurements from several nodes and and you are using the same network and you cannot send too much information and so only one of these measurements per transfer the transmission will be transmitted how to choose and uh, how to choose, there are different, it is called scheduling protocols. You may 
sent one after another. This is called round robin protocol. One after another, it is periodic protocol. But you can do some optimization. For instance, you can choose the one which differs from the last one, which was sent. Uh, it changes. It changes more than the other one. So we give the priority to the signal which changed uh, more essential. And how to treat such a system? And all the three approaches which were used for sample data, discrete time approach and hybrid system approach, and later our time delay approach was used. And it appeared that, of course, time delay approach has advantages and delays. So this was the only approach which managed uh, in the presence of communication constraints, it managed with large communication delays. What does it mean that delay may be larger than sampling interval? And uh, this is a very, uh, very strong restriction to have it smaller than sampling interval, and we have removed this restriction. And uh, we have extended this result to the so-called to the large-scale system today's everything large-scale big data and so on and you have to to uh, control it efficiently in a decentralized manner what does it mean that for instance you have several plants several uh, drones and you want, and each of them has its own network with, a, with this controller, but they are somehow uh, coupled. There is dependence and what can be done. And it appears that, uh, for instance, if this coupling is small, not very, essential, then we can use the Lapunov method, Lapunov function, which depends only on this plant. Uh, plant dependent Lapunov function, and this uh, greatly simplifies the analysis, and you can, uh, based on this, you can uh, do the control inefficiently. And this was example, for instance, these are just two plants, two inverted pendulums on the cars, which are coupled by this spring. Uh, and you have network control to each of them. So, and, uh, and these were results, uh, upper bounds on the maximum sampling interval. We uh, ignored here delay because uh, by hybrid system approach, large delay could not work. So these were upper bound on sampling intervals by using hybrid system approach. And we had essentially larger upper bounds by using time delay approach. And uh, what was more important, we managed efficiently with additional delays, which are always in the network. So till now, I talked about um, delay robustness, how to, how to have, uh, if without delay, everything is fine, then how to find upper bound of delay, which preserves the stability of performance. But now the question what to do if your delay is large and uh, you cannot have robustness, you have to do something with it. And the first uh, um, ideas on this were introduced by Smith, Smith predictors, it was even before I was born, <laughs> in the end of 50s. And, um, 
and what, uh, but it was done in the frequency domain and we are talking about state-space methods. So how to manage with large delay. And uh, the idea of Smith predictor was translated to the state space. Um, I would like to cite this paper by Manitius and Albright in 79. So what is the idea? For instance, let us hear R is large delay, what to do with this. Let us uh, call this as V of T. You control without any delay. Formally, we can do it and we consider such a system. And we assume that AB is stabilizable, for instance, and we have appropriate state feedback, which solved our problem without delay. So this is fine, but if we go back to our control input, what happens? Ut equals kxt plus r, because vt is ut minus r, yes? So what happens? We have here advanced time set in the future, and we cannot measure it anyway. But in this, uh, linear case, it is very simple. We can use the so-called uh, variation of constants formula. For instance, integrating these from t till t plus r, we can find xt plus r as function of xt. This is done here. What is good in this? So this term we can find x in the current time we know by assumption, but here the control is in the past time, actually. And in the past time, we can always uh, calculate this term. So finally, we finish up with this presentation and here ut plus xi and xi is negative. So we can apply this control law and this is called classical predictor, which works when you have linear system, it works rather good. But this is when you have known constant delay which is nice, but what happens if additionally to this non-constant delay, you may have small time variant delay, which is probably due to this network control where you always have sampling and something else. And for this case, we consider such system and now tau is close to R with some additional uh, time varying uncertain term. And uh, how to treat this case, the idea came from Tzvi Arstein, he is also from Israel, and this is now classical method. So he suggested to make this state transformation and to uh, which um, if we apply this transformation, we finish up with such a system. And we assume that A plus BK is curved, is stable. And this is additional term due to small perturbation of R. And we can analyze stability of this by the same Laponov method that I have shown you more or less. So this is doable. And in our more recent papers with my postdoc Yang Shu, um, we have considered this uh, delay compensation, it is called of predictor methods for large scale systems. So we have here several delays, one is constant and another is small time delay. And actually we have also considered some uh, measurement and here we have small uh, delays in the measurement. And uh, actually there are three basic predictor methods. One 
the classical one that I have shown you, but uh, there is also the so-called backstepping approach and PDE. So actually the delayed term you can present as additional uh, transport partial differential equation. And then uh, you have to use the backstepping approach um, introduced by Miroslav Pristich. And also there is another method of subpredictors. What are subpredictors? These are observers of the future state. And uh, so among these methods, these subpredictors appear to be the most flexible and most robust to time varying uncertainties. Okay, now another topic, a few words. I'm working a lot with control of distributed parameter systems, so partial differential equations, and also network-based control of such systems. Why this may be of interest? For instance, uh, chemical reactors, so uh, air polluted areas, they are governed by uh, partial differential equations like diffusion equations. And it is very attractive to have, for instance, uh, long distance control of such systems. But more recent application of our method was due to multi-agents. And today it is a very hot topic. You have multi-agents, you have to control. And this is the picture of deployment of 800 drones. You have to place them, to deploy them on a certain surface, let us say. How to do it? So one way may be to, to have models of ODs of this, of each of these drones, and you have 800 ODs, and you have to find a control law and to analyze this huge system. But there is a problem of scaling. What does it mean? If next time you have, uh, you have 801 or two drones, then you have to solve this problem from the very beginning. On the other side, you can model all this as distributed parameter system. It is distributed in space. You can use model, for instance, of heat equation. And, and from one side, it gives you ideas of new control laws. Uh, from the other side, so how to apply these control laws, you discretize your PDE by using, for instance, finite differences in space, in special variable. And this will give you uh, new decentralized control laws, which are, uh, may be efficient and which give you much simpler conditions than ODE approach with 800 equations. And if you have more, uh, agents, then you have your conditions will be even better. So this is the advantage of PDEs. And actually, uh, we have introduced two methods for output feedback control because, well, usually in practice, you, you cannot measure overstate, but for infinite dimensional, a uh, partial differential equation when your state is distributed on something, it is infinite dimensional, you cannot measure it, yes? So output feedback, for instance, you can measure it on the boundary or you can have some averaged measurements, averaged in special variable, this is doable. This is what is done usually in practice. And for this output feedback control, we have introduced two uh, constructive methods, special decomposition method where we discretize, we have sampling in space as well as sampling in time. 
And another is model decomposition for finite dimensional absorber-based control. And this is very, uh, very important results which we achieved with my uh, formal ready um, PhD student Ramin Katz, here is here. And uh, this is, uh, this was open problem for about 40 years because uh, usually people used uh, approximations and we found very, very efficient and simple conditions which were needed to solve this problem. And there is a lot of problems to be uh, solved by using this method. And uh, to summarize this part about network-based control and, uh, and time delay systems, you can open my book from 2014 or my book with my former uh, PhD, Kun Leo. And we had also a survey in 2008. And now I will say a few words about stabilizing delay. Uh, I can show you Tango, which I uh, did. Just let me reset this share the screen sharing because the audio was not okay. shared online. So it's just uh, okay. I know that you are tired, you want some entertainment. <laughs> Okay, so let me try. Uh, just a moment. But I... okay. Uh, uh, this is... Okay, I must know where we are this is our teacher, and he explains us that after the you have to you have to stop, and this is actually delayed. Otherwise, by nature, you don't fly away because this is a what do you know? What do you know? I don't know. 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 Actually, this is memory to my father, who was an excellent lecturer for mathematics. And uh, my heart belongs to Diddy. This is for him. <laughs> okay. Now, I'm going to bed. Okay. So, So for this stabilizing delay, I just want to explain how, how we have derived a very simple lack of conditions. What, what is the problem here? That without delay, you have no stability anymore. And so what I have told before, it does not work. But it appeared that we just need a bit more and it will work. And it took me a long time to understand this. Actually, these simple results appeared just uh, about five years ago, though we have used other huge LMI. LMI is a linear matrix inequalities conditions in terms of LMIs, which can be verified by using standard programs in MATLAB, which are very efficient. But all these conditions correspond to some very complicated level of constructions. And we found some simple constructions and with feasibility, with, with feasibility guarantees for small enough delay. 
If you use, for instance, LMIs, what is important, not just to derive some LMIs without any guarantees, you can derive something which will never work or will work in some special examples. But you have to prove that your LMIs will be always feasible for certain values of parameters. And so how to deal with this case when A plus A1 is not always? So actually, when A plus A1 is always, I have shown you one method. This presentation here, H is constant, but the same presentation as I have shown you can be used. But uh, we have another possibility for it to present this um, disturbance as derivative of integral. And in this case, we will finish up with such system presentation, and it is called neutral type system. What is neutral type system where uh, delay appears in the highest derivative? So this is another presentation. And uh, it appears that if we have the case of stabilizing delay, we just need one more term in Taylor approximation. And that's all. And then it will work uh, in the same manner as the previous case. For instance, we can use this presentation and then we have to compensate this term by using some additional functional, it is called of krasowski functional, or you can use neutral type presentation and uh, construct appropriate Lapanov functionals. And this was uh, a sample data delayed implementation that I mentioned in the very beginning of my lecture was done with my former postdoc, Anton Selivanov, who is now in Sheffield University. And uh, so these are his romantic uh, notations. This is desirable control, but not implementable, so we have to find something approximate but implementable, and this is the sample data one. And uh, now, just to show how this works. For instance, this is uh, the same double integrator that I have shown, but with some uncertainty. And these are the measurements. And so we first construct the full state feedback file, the observer, uh, the controller gains. And then we use instead static output feedback with gains found from here by certain uh, equalities. And we find from here the upper bound on the sampling interval, which preserves the stability, and then uh, this uh, the resulting control again. So this is very simple to implement, and our LMI conditions are also very simple. And now there are a lot of um, extensions of stabilizing delay for nonlinear cases and so on. And I will mention uh, briefly a very recent time delay approach, this time to averaging. And what is averaging? For instance, you have inverted pendulum and you, you can stabilize it by using appropriate uh, amplitude and high oscillations and how to uh, give mathematical proof why this may be stable. This uses averaging that I will explain later on, but now I just want to show you what, what does it mean. 
So this was done without without quantitative bounds on the amplitude and on the frequency of oscillation. <laughs> and actually, till, till our recent results, starting from 2020, there were no analytical tools how to find this uh, upper bound on frequency uh, uh, and low bound on the frequency of the oscillation and upper bound on the amplitude. And by introducing time to the approach, we found such bounds. I will explain how, but now how it will work with our conditions. These are perturbations and still it is stable. This is, this is the so-called vibrational control. Okay. Mm -hmm. And what is my main screen? It was just, was just mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Okay. That's... Okay. And now a bit of history about energy. So actually, uh, it started, let us say, in the uh, analytical mathematical form, uh, starting by from Lagrange works in the 18th century and in the beginning and middle of the last century in Soviet Union by Krylov and Bogolubov and Bogolubov and Mitropolsky, there were some asymptotic methods. What does it mean, asymptotic methods? For small enough values of parameters or for high enough frequencies, it should work. But how to find some quantitative bounds, it was open question. Why it is important for control community? For instance, uh, averaging in control is the so-called vibrational control, like you have seen with inverted pendulum, or uh, extremum seeking. Extreme seeking, it is uh, uh, the the online optimization which learns the system online and you may have uh, no knowledge or partial knowledge of your system and you uh, solve optimization problem it is now very uh, popular topic and for instance in machine learning you learn but you have no guarantees and here you learn system and you have guarantees this is advantage of adaptive control that you learn the system and you can guarantee something and uh, there is also another problem the so-called brokers problem of static output feedback stabilization. One way how to enlarge the class of static output feedback controllers we have seen by introducing artificial delay. But another way can be by using fast levarine gain instead of K, which is constant, you may have fast levarine. And all these problems are based the solutions to the analytical analysis is based on average. So let us consider the simplest linear system. And here A depends on T over epsilon. For instance, you have cosine or sine, which depends on T over epsilon, like this, very fastly oscillating. How we can 
gonna, uh, how we can study analysis of this system and especially uh, how we can find some bounds on epsilon which guarantees everything. For instance, when A was constant, we have seen that we can use the quadratic Lapham function and have some simple conditions. But what to do if you have T over epsilon? So uh, in the averaging, let us consider A, which is, uh, which is epsilon uh, periodic here in this term. So integral of this A, let us say from T minus epsilon till T is some matrix, constant matrix, which is Hurwitz, which is stable. So this is, uh, so in this case, the average system looks like this, x dot equals a average multiplied by x, and it is stable. And the uh, basic classical theorem for averaging, I'm referring here to the book of Khalil, but of course it was proved uh, about 60 years before, before today, I mean, not before Halil. Here it is before 40 years. Yes. So the classical result is uh, sounds like this. If the average system is stable, then for small enough epsilon, your system is stable. But no any hints how to find this epsilon. And what we have done this with my postdoc, Jin Zheng, we have presented this system as a time delay system. We integrated both parts from T minus epsilon till T. And we finished up with the so-called neutral type system and, and system like this. So delta A here stands from for some small uncertainties, and G is of the order of epsilon, it is small, and Y is also of the order of epsilon, and it is small. And for this, we can construct appropriate Lapin Trasovsky and, and have upper bounds, because now epsilon becomes the length of delay, upper bound on the delay. For instance, uh, this is this was the, the model of inverted pendulum from the book of Khalil, and we found some upper bound on epsilon, but of course it is far from the one from simulations. To tell the truth, now we have much better upper bounds. We are working on improvement, but all these sufficient conditions are improved. And these are good news because in this way I became a highly cited researcher because if you have necessary and sufficient conditions, so it is closed. But if you have just sufficient, somebody will improve you. And another interesting example is the switch system. So for instance, you are staying uh, epsilon, beta epsilon seconds on one system, and then one minus beta epsilon seconds on the other system. Why, why do you need to switch? Uh, for instance, each of these system is not stable. For instance, uh, this is our example, clearly, uh, so it may be shown that not this, not this system is not stable. But the convex combination of these matrices is Hurwitz. For instance, if we choose beta, I think, 0.4, then this becomes stable. And what does it mean? That if we stay beta epsilon seconds here and one minus beta epsilon seconds here, in the average, it will give us this stable system, and this is the idea. So what we want to find the upper bound on epsilon, which stabilizes 
uh, your system by using switching. Each system is not stable, but if you switch fast enough, you are stable. And we have applied this averaging to some power systems and also as I mentioned to extreme speaking and this was done with my uh, former PhD uh, postdoc from uh, Yang Zhu who is now in uh, Zhejiang University. And so the first analytical results for uh, analytical results, uh, mathematical proof for extreme seeking problems was presented by Miroslav Kristic, but these were qualitative results for small enough epsilon, net, everything works. But how to find epsilon net was open till Till our problem, I think I will skip and just uh, conclude. Oh, yeah. I think everyone is tired already. Uh, just probably to say about application of this um, extreme seeking, uh, to, we have two D vehicle control in GPS denial. For instance, we, uh, we have some vehicle uh, autonomous unmanned system, AU, AU, and uh, it doesn't matter. You oh, have, are yes, yes. Uh, you, uh, unmanned, uh, yes. So we want to achieve some target, but we have no GPS and we don't want to have GPS, otherwise probably our enemy can identify us, what can be done. So, uh, but we have measurements of the distance uh, to, to our target. What can be done here, we can use this adaptive control and for instance, for the estimate for approximation of our X coordinate, we have something which uses our measurements of this distance and of Y. This is 2D in for X and Y. And it appears that by using extreme seeking algorithm with highly uh, oscillating uh, coefficient here and inside we can achieve this. And now in there uh, to summarize, I, uh, I want to finish up with advertisement of my course together with Pierre Dominico Pepe from Lacvilla. We will teach uh, European uh, course for graduate students in control in April in Paris. And so all the topics that I mentioned and many others that I have not mentioned we will teach. And this is a perfect time to spend in Paris. So if you have possibilities, please register to this course before March 19. And, and I'll be happy to see you in Paris. And so to conclude, take care of delays by appropriate tools and to use delays for re reliable control and crossing. Switch back to the video of the class for everyone here, and thank you again for your for your presentation. It was very nice. And if anyone has questions, either here or from remote, uh, of course, questions are more than welcome. I must say that the the microphone was working not perfectly from online. I tried to move it closer. Hope everything was clear.
And do you have questions? I like to hear any discussion. We will just be charged. Okay, so thank you very much for your question. <laughs> Oh, there is a question from ah, Bianca. Hi, Bianca. Hi, Professor. How are you? I'm fine. <laughs> Hi, Adriano. First of Hi. all, thank you for the, the events, for organizing this event. Thanks, Emilia, for your talk. And so I have uh, just a question, uh, just a curiosity, just because uh, you speak about the predictor. Mm -hmm. uh, so my question is for predictor based uh, state feedback controller mm -hmm. do you think that uh, it's uh, better to use um, classical art stain predictor or sub predictor so what are the benefits the pros and cons of both approaches this is my question uh, see you you have if you can use both you can you can do it and you can compare the implementation and the performance. Because uh, if you, in the case when you can use both of them, the criticism about the classical predictor is uh, that you have to be careful with this integral term, mm -hmm. which you have to discretize in a smart we otherwise you may have some undesired instability issues and and also in order to implement it you you have to use all the memory from t minus r till t which is also maybe somehow expensive to implement this or for star predictor you just use uh, your a memory from a fraction of to the create the change yes. you mean yes but and recently with rame we have um, extended these sub predictors to partial differential equations and for non-linear case so if you have non-linear system how will you use classical predictor you cannot use variation of constants formula but by sub predictor, you may do almost the same as for linear case. And these are uh, the advantages. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to see you. <laughs> also for me. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Adriano. Thank you for participating. Mm -hmm. Any other question? I guess the guys here are. Tired. Okay. I see. Yes. Oh. Okay. So, if there is no question, I would thank again Professor Friedman. Um,